When you focus on your breath, you're focusing on the force of life. It's what keeps the body and the mind together. So it only stands to reason that if the breath is comfortable, it's going to be good for the body, good for the mind. So pay careful attention. There's so many things in the world that we can't have an, a good effect on. So many things would be under control. But the breath is something that is under our control. We should learn how to take advantage of that. We can create a sense of well-being inside, a sense of ease, a source of energy when you're feeling tired, a way to relax when you're feeling tense, something soothing when you're feeling ragged. It's a good skill to master how to breathe. I mean, everybody breathes. We don't approach it as a skill. This is one of the things that the Buddha is really good at, was seeing that these activities that we do in a normal way every day can be mastered as skills. Generosity is a skill. Virtue is a skill. Breathing is a skill. Getting your mind to stay focused on something, that's a skill. Generosity is a skill in which you think about who would be a good person to give something to, what good things you have to give. To think about what kind of attitude you bring to it. And you can increase the happiness by what you give if you think about these things. Same with virtue. There are times when you have to abstain from harming someone else and you complain about it. Well, that's not very likely to create happiness. But when you think about the fact that okay, you're not giving in to your impulses to do harm, and you're trying your best to live a harmless life, then whatever difficulties there may be are suddenly worth it. You think of people who've done things that they then later regret for the rest of their lives, and they can't go back and change them. Whereas you make up your mind ahead of time, you're not going to do anything harmful. You avoid those kinds of regrets. And breathing. Okay, you can breathe just automatically, let the body do its breathing on its own. Or you can pay attention to it. And to pay attention to it, the breath gets better and the mind settles in. And then you get the mind in a place where you can actually watch it and see what it is in the mind that's still causing you trouble. As the Buddha pointed out, we suffer because of our own craving, our own clinging. So what are the ways in which you hold on to your cravings and clinging? It's actually liking them. Now, can you look at them carefully to see that actually they're the problem? This is not to say that all desires are bad. The desire to act skillfully is a good desire. The, act, the desire to avoid unskillful behavior, that's a good desire too. It's just you're learning here again how to desire skillfully. When you preach, you approach these things as skills, you find that these ordinary, everyday activities can be a source of genuine happiness. And you can find happiness within. You don't have to go looking outside for it all the time. Because if you're dependent on the world for your happiness, they can take it away at any time. But if your happiness comes from within, it's under your control. So learn how to master this set of skills. Learn how to exert some skillful control here. And you find that you have a source of genuine happiness inside that doesn't run dry. Mm -hmm.